Hello and welcome to a quick tutorial on how to run hardware in loop simulations for a Pixhawk with PX4 software through QGround Control. As you can see there is a website that documents a basic tutorial for how to do this. This is just going to be a walkthrough so you can see how it was actually done by our team. Note that for this to be successful you need a Pixhawk with the following things plugged in. A buzzer a switch, a receiver that is bound to a transmitter, and your Pixhawk must be plugged into your computer. We ran hardware and loot simulations with X-Plane version 10 and with QGround control. You can simply do this by connecting your Pixhawk to your computer that has both of those programs with a micro USB cable. The aircraft we're going to be flying is an Easy Star because that is a model that has been provided for us which we can import into X-Plane. To do that, download the file from the website that is shown here and then it gives you a file path within X-Plane for where you need to place it so you can call this file when you start up X-Plane and hence you can call the Easy Star model. Within X-Plane, you need to set up a few parameters so that the Pixhawk can read these values in, such as the attitude of your aircraft. To do this, there are three different windows that you need to access, and you need to change the settings to specified values. The place where you can change these values is if you just click once you're within X-Plane, you'll see a toolbar come up the top and select settings and then the three subtrees respectively. These values will just be shown here quickly. You can pause the video and find and to actually change value. This now means X-Plane is set up to the point where it can output and read in all the values to and from the Pixhawk. You now need to go and set up the Pixhawk through QGround control. The first thing that needs to be done is you need to load an airframe configuration. We're going to load the Easy Star airframe, but in addition to the Easy Star airframe which you're used to, you have to tell QGround Control that you're going to be using this for simulation purposes, and hence you don't just select the typical Easy Star model. So while you're doing this, make sure you have a Pixhawk that is plugged in and connected, which will allow you to change the model that you're currently using. Once you connect it, give it a few seconds so that it can flash across all the firmware that's on board to your computer, at which point the parameter trees come up. And you can select airframe. Go down here and select plane, x-plane, HIL star, which is the easy star model that we're going to be loading into x-plane. Once you've done this, you can set up the simulation, or you can just go straight ahead and flash it with that mode by clicking apply and restart. Your Pixhawk will power cycle itself with the new flight mode being enabled. It is important to then calibrate your transmitter so that flying within X-Plane will be realistic. Now you need to connect QGround Control to X-Plane so that it knows to read in the values, run the computations and output the values to X-Plane, not to the typical servo channels. To do this, you need to go to the HIL simulation tab. So in QGround Control, either press Control 8 or go through the advanced menu. At this point, you now need to tell it to connect to X-Plane, so under HIL Config 1, please select X-Plane 10. Make sure that the value for the host here is set with this value, which works in tandem with a value that you set up in X-Plane earlier in this tutorial. Ensure that Enable Sensor Level HIL is selected. At this point, start X-Plane so that you're able to connect the two systems. Once you load into X-Plane, make sure that you select the HIL star or the Easy Star model. This will be under General Aviation only if you have placed the file which you downloaded earlier under General Aviation. Otherwise, it will be under whichever other category of aircraft you place the file. Once you've selected this and the conditions that you'd like to fly in, select Fly. 
as we failed to calibrate our controller correctly, the aircraft took off initially. You now need to connect the two systems, so under HIL config 1, select connect. At this point, you should see a message two lines down stating receiving from X plane at X hertz. Ensure that this value is in fact there to show that the system is receiving telemetry from X plane. Now that your system is ready, you can arm it. Remember that before you arm the system, you must have pressed the safety switch to the point where it is able to accept an arming message. Once you arm the system, your autopilot is now in control of your aircraft. Hence, whatever mode you were in before you armed it, in our case manual, will be the mode that the aircraft acts under. You can change the view with either Shift 8 to go to Chase Cam or once again clicking, going to the view menu and selecting whichever view you'd like. The aircraft has now been placed in altitude hold or stabilize mode. As you can see, the aircraft is able to remain stable. Manual control is taken over at this point to ensure that when the aircraft is placed at an irregular angle and then transition back to stabilize mode, the aircraft can in fact control itself. The aircraft is now taken out of manual mode and put into auto mode. A mission has already been loaded with five different waypoints, four of which are waypoints, one of which is a landing coordinate. As can be seen from the Q ground control interface, the aircraft is now tracking to waypoint three because that was the waypoint which was previously selected. You can change this by selecting waypoint zero. It will then update which waypoint it aims for. The altitude can be seen here, which is close, if not exactly the same, as the aim as the altitude at which the aircraft would like to be to hit the first waypoint. Once it has hit the first waypoint, it moves along to aim for the second one. As you can see, the aircraft is quite well tuned because the model was previously set up to have the specific PID values required to control an easy star with a high level of accuracy. These are values which were set up in the file which was loaded in. The aircraft now transitions between the waypoints, updating the aiming waypoint as soon as it successfully hits the previous one. As the aircraft hits waypoint 4, it will aim for the next waypoint, which is a landing waypoint, so it will decrease its throttle, drop altitude and flare before landing. Note the aircraft is not successfully landing because of the altitude we gave for landing being above the ground by such a significant margin. This is just for demonstration purposes. The waypoint aimed for is now transitioned to waypoint 3. A new mission will be uploaded, defining a tight circle for the aircraft to fly in to test its ability to hit a waypoint after a very tight turn and to show what will happen if it fails to hit a waypoint. The aircraft is now transitioned into auto mode. The aircraft now aims for waypoint zero. It is a tight turn between waypoints two and three as they are placed very close to each other. The aircraft fails to hit waypoint three because of the drop in altitude and the tight turn required. Upon failing to hit the waypoint, it will circle around and try and hit it in the second case. The aircraft successfully hits the third waypoint and moves on to aim for the fourth waypoint. Note, at this point the transmitter was turned off and the aircraft successfully flew to the fourth waypoint as it was in an auto mission and was able to deal with a loss of RC connection. However, upon completion of the mission, it had no radio signal and it had no mission profile, so it returned to home. 
In a normal case, when the aircraft has successfully finished a mission, if it still has an RC connection, it will loiter at the current location. The aircraft will continue to loiter until it receives an RC signal to override that, receives a message from the ground station, Q ground control, to override its current return to launch, or until it runs out of battery life. This should have given you a short tutorial on how to set up the conditions such that hardware in loop simulations can be run. It should also show you a typical mission that can be run under these circumstances to show how your aircraft would behave in a given set of conditions.